All right, I'm a smidge early. I figured why not, and especially where I'm doing things in another room today, and I don't want to, there we go, I don't want to knock my phone over. So good morning, good morning. Good um, a holiday for some folks here in the U.S. and maybe in other uh, in other places. Um, hello, Katie from Indiana. Gary, and I, don't, I know you're not from Gary, Indiana. I got to think of other songs, but nice to see you. Nice to see you, Eileen and Feral Girl and Lucifer and PM11208 and um, Lori and, um, you know, folks like that there. I'm always interested here since it's just a few of us here. Um, if you could tell me what state you are joining in on. Um, I'm not in my uh, in my my studio, my office, my room. But I always love to imagine where people are. I am, I am in, uh, I almost said Massachusetts, which is funny because I'm not. I'm from Mass. I'm in Pennsylvania right now. Illinois, Indiana, New Jersey, Oregon, California. Awesome. We got, oh, California, you're up early. Good on you. Delaware, yes. Oh, there we go. PM, now I know. Yeah. Very awesome, friends. So we are here. We are here for a TikTok Live. Uh, Bonnie Esther, I, I didn't really realize you were a, a Massachusettsonian like I am. I'm in my salon, get salon getting ready, New Orleans, friends all over the world. Leilani is in South Carolina. I just love this. I I am not really good at um, geography. I joke at the fact that when we were supposed to learn it when I was going to school, we spent like two freaking years on like the bicentennial. And so we barely know the states outside of, um, outside of New England. Uh, so I love to discover the... Um, anything that can help me remind me where my states are. There we go. Oh, you're in Marlboro. Oh, you were in one of the boroughs. Yeah, my, my, my sister and I joke, we have, we have neighbors out that way. So who knows? We probably have some random connection. Anyhow, good morning, everybody. Um, Destination Decluttered. If you haven't met before, if you're just kind of scrolling and you popped upon me, my name is Beth. Um, I am a decluttering life coach, but I would much rather you just remember, instead of my name, it's not about me, it's about you. Destination Decluttered. What do you want your home and life to look like and feel like and function like? So um, today, this may sound kind of random to you because um, uh, this room that I'm doing my TikTok live in right now, and I realize I'm probably going to sneeze in a minute, um, is what used to be or what was supposed to be or when this house was built in the 50s was supposed to be, and probably was for a while, the dining room. Now think about the fact that the way that our houses are often constructed don't necessarily reflect how we use them. Um, excuse me, I am going to sneeze. Uh, so just notice that. And today, because this was something decluttering wise that some folks, um, I do TikTok lives quite often and I also have a mailing list and people said, hey, you know what would be really helpful? Some folks were saying if you could do like a themed, like a category of clutter, and just um, for like, so that's what I'm doing for the month of October is just getting specific. And I, and I said, okay, what categories would you like? And somebody said like the dining room, the, the china, the crystal, the stuff that's in the dining room. So today I will say this, if you're like, oh, my dining room is fine. I don't have a dining room. I'm going to sign off. No, no, no. Here's the wonderful thing that even though each one of these TikTok lives this month are going to be like to something specific ish. It's the same process that you go through with every room. So once you click, once you it clicks to know how to do one room, you'll you'll know how to do every room. But I thought it might be kind of fun to just you know you know mix it up a little bit. I like to have fun when things are boring. I get I lose interest and I just get distracted. Um, but here I am. So I am in what used to be my dining room before we moved in. But I will say this: <laughs> Junktober. I love it, Bonnie Esther. That's great. Yeah, um, that's that's awesome. So let me ask you this. Before I start riffing here, riffing, um, your dining room, your area where you eat, what do you have a room in your home that is ostensibly like if there was a, a floor plan, a blueprint, it says dining room. If there is, is it cluttered? Now, it's so funny. I think back right now to the dining room in the house I grew up in, which was a very kind of square colonial type New Englandy house and there was a dining room but 99% of the time we used it as like a hallway to get from the kitchen to go upstairs to the front front door or like upstairs um all righty so Robin is saying yay definitely need the china and the crystal okay let's hit that then because this is usually the stuff that jams people up now here's a fun thing back in the day 
the china china and i even did this i, I brought a few things here china this is this is my grandmother's pattern okay as you can notice it's very floral kind of not fussy but overly decorated compared to my own vibe notice the the difference between this dish and this stuff and what i want to offer to you and i want to share with you and i want to give you permission to even just think about it's like here i'm offering something to you think of this i offer you ideas and you can pick them up and just notice that these dishes were important to my grandmother i assume because she had them um they are now in my mother's corner cupboard but at some point they are probably going to come to me now the neat thing is is that i'm psyched because they've got some colors in it that are picked up i'm doing a tick i just did a video about my fiesta wear my dishes that i really use so i'm going to incorporate some of these into my own collection so but if they didn't i would make a different plan for them macy thank you for loving my page and um what i want to offer is just because you don't love something that somebody else loved doesn't mean that you don't love that person like just because i i my my grandmother and i had different tastes of dishware doesn't mean i did not love her as a grammy on the flip side just because you love the person, just because I loved my, my grandmother, does not mean I am morally and socially obligated to love her dishes. Now just let that, just, just that's a big concept to think about. The difference between how you feel about a person and how you feel about their stuff. And also, this is where I come into it and I'm like, I am here for you. Your home, you, your life, what's important to you. You, you, you. And I want to say that it is okay for you to not have their stuff in your home. Do not feel guilty that something was important to somebody else and it's not important to you. You are just as important as their stuff. And if their stuff is weighing you down, then there are ways that you can remove it from your life in a way that feels good. Okay? Um, there we go. Yes, I have a dining room, but boxes in the corner with passed down china. Okay, a couple of really helpful hints I want to I share with you right? So first of all, now I, this is the other thing too, is I have been like a kind of a dish fiend for forever. I used to work at Pier 1 Imports. I worked at Mikasa. Um, I collected, kind of collect, um, collected uh, Fiesta Wear and things like that back before the 86, you know, Fiesta Wear revival. And I love this stuff, but you only, how many dishes do you actually need? How often do you use things? Ask yourself these questions and these questions may help you decide whether you want to keep them or you want to give them away. Now, China, the good stuff that if you look up and it might be, you know, if it's bone China, you can usually see through it. Um, this was an important social statement that people had in their lives decades ago because it meant that you had enough money to afford two sets of dishes and you had fancy ones for when you did fancy things. It was a big deal. It also becomes kind of a racket when you um, when you're when you're getting married. It's like you got to register for good China. And. Times have changed, tastes have changed, the way we live has changed. I don't know about you, but the ch China, notice somebody said that they've got it in um, boxes. Are you even using it? Or you use it maybe two or three times a year. Now, decide what feels right to you. I come in and I do these TikTok lives and I offer you just some questions to ask yourself and answer for yourself. Okay, <laughs> I love this. Caroline says, I turned all the crystal bowls into dog bowls and feel really good about it. I think that is awesome. Use the good stuff. Who was it? Ar Irma Bombeck back in the 70s, who was like, you know, use those candles. Your life is important to have it, create it the way you want. Do not become like the, the I don't know, the museum of somebody else's life. Ooh, that was a good one. Okay, what else do we have? Okay, Ch China and Crystal. Um, and the other thing I want to offer is, think about this. Now, again, notice how it's we're in the alleged um, dining room. But this concept I'm going to offer to you is not just about dishes, but it's about everything that your gut is telling you that you don't want, but your brain, your brain and your gut are like... <laughs> I was going to say they're like beans and cornbread, but that is such an in-joke between my husband and me. But there's like a little bit of a, a back and forth between what your gut says and what your brain is saying. Like your gut is like, I don't like these dishes or I don't, 
I don't want these dishes in my life because they're not in everyday use or you're not using them and you're feeling kind of conflicted about it. The conflict is between your gut and your brain offering up. You can't get rid of those. Those are Grammy's dishes. Those might be worth something someday. Somebody might like those. Those shouldn't go in a dumpster. All these thoughts that are creating kind of tension and conflict between your gut about what you really want to do. Like if I didn't know those were my grandmothers, I was like, nope, don't like them. No big deal. I'll just put them to some place to donate. <laughs> notice, notice that if you are not using something, you have already made a very quiet but powerful decision about how much you really want that stuff. Notice that. Notice if you don't want it and be cool with that. Quiet down the backseat driver in your brain that's convincing you to hang on to that stuff. And maybe that voice actually has the voice of somebody else you know, like a parent or a cousin or a, or a sibling or something that says, you can't get rid of that. That's good stuff. Just notice that, but then say, hey, wait a minute. What about me? What about what I want? And what am I going to do with the time I have on the planet? And what am I going to surround myself with, if anything? And I want to surround myself with stuff that brings me joy and love. And if those dishes don't fit into it, it doesn't mean I didn't love my family. It doesn't mean anything. But I'm going to release it kind of out into the wild. And here's a good thing. Think about the fact that if those dishes don't do it for you, there could be somebody else on the planet who is dying to complete their set because they love that dish set. I noticed a thing recently that it was a TikTok um, about, like it, it literally was about like, hey, people in the North, you're getting rid of your your dishes, don't do that, like your, your China. We here down in the South, our Southern compatriots want the China, that old fashioned kind of stuff. Have at it. If you want to keep it, if you don't, it's okay to release it. That's kind of my theme. It's okay to release it, okay? And there are different levels of releasing it. It doesn't go immediately from the china closet into a dumpster. There are stages in between where you can figure out what to do with things that feels right to you so it makes it easier for you to, instead of hanging on to it, you can loosen your grip and release it so that your home and life reflect who you are, okay? So boxes in the corner with passed down china, you're obviously not using them for dishes. Maybe you use them occasionally, and if not, see if somebody else in your family wants them. See how much they might... Um, offer on the open market. What you do is you flip it over, you look at the, um, you know, the insignia, you Google that stuff. I will say this, you'll probably get a um, return from someplace called Replacements Limited. Now they do a great job. They are a great, seriously, warehousing place of all sorts of chinas and stuff like that. Um, however, you will not be getting, if they're, you see their retail price, that's not what you're going to get when you sell it to them, but it could be a place that you, if you decide to want to um, donate, not donate, but um, move that stuff along, you might want to research that. Okay. Um, what else do we have uh, here? I inherited my Nana's house full of her stuff. So this is much needed. Okay. Macy, it was your Nana's house in the past. Notice how I'm kind of putting my hand. I'm, I'm only in my, my little window here, but my hand is going way back then, back in the past, this was your Nana's house. Today, you, right now, right here, it is your house. And just because it used to be your Nana's house doesn't mean it has to continue being that. You can transform that house into something you love so that you love living in it now and in the future. Just notice that. Release yourself from it. Your Nana just wants you to be happy. Everybody in our lives, if you say, they just want me to be happy and this is what I'm going to do, notice that. Um, I sold, call me Pat says, I sold all the gold rimmed bone china because I live in the country with four guys and it didn't work for me. Yes. Notice your life. Notice the life you live right now and how does your stuff fit into how you live right now? And I will offer this too. Like if you don't, and I offer a lot, I do. I just give here, here's an idea about decluttering. I offer it to you. You can pick it up and use it. You can swirl it around in your head. If you want it, you can keep it. If not, it's okay if it doesn't resonate with you. Um, but at least I know I've given you some things to think about. Um, but if your life, how it is now, is not how you want it, how can you make it more like that? You know, like maybe Pat did want to use her gold rim dome china because she wanted to use it more. Then you could do that as well. You make decisions that feel right to you. Okay? Just notice that. Um, I get this. Uh, HBV says, I donated my late wife's wedding dress yesterday. It was time. And here's the thing. Thank you so much for sharing with that. Because so many, t and it says, it was time. And it felt good. 
it felt good because you know what? There's going to be some adorable, now I'm getting a little bit choked up myself. There's going to be some beautiful bride out there who like is going to look so beautiful in that dress or components of it. And that's an awesome thing that you just did. Notice those are sentimental things. The sentimentality, do not dis do not discount the sentimental things. Notice I'm not even you and my body is reacting in a through the heart of that. Notice that you can feel feels and it's okay. And it can be good to release things. That can also feel good. All right. Ooh, a whole bunch of new things here. Um, uh, let's see what we have. Um, tips to declutter kids spaces, working with my eight-year-old on art supplies. Sure, Lily, I'll give you a quick tip on this one. Get them involved. Get, in, get involved and get curious, the both of you, you and your eight-year-old. Start to get your eight-year-old into the mindset of, what is this thing? Do I want it? If I want it, where does it go? If I don't want it, where does it go? Now, here's the funny thing. That's like my, I guess, my easy kind of wicked, wicked easy four-step process. And what I want to suggest is when I say, what is this, is easy. What Do I want it or not? That's what you and I talk about. Do I want it or not? The decision-making process. But every time you make a decision to say this is something I, I have made a conscious decision and a subconscious decision about that aligns with my subconscious of what do I want in my life and what I don't want in my life, that is such a good life skill. Get them involved. And with art supplies, 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 <laughs> notice that there are certain supplies you probably use a lot. Keep those within easy reach. Notice the things you bought or have and don't use. Get curious about why you're not using them. And again, I'm talking to Lily about her eight year art supplies with her eight year old, but this is everybody, everybody. Look at the stuff in your home that you are currently not using. And this is always the first step. And I know I've got some of my one-on-one -on -one clients on here. So you know this, I'm going to say, just get curious. Get curious about what is this thing and why am I not using it? Now, the answer is going to be, you know, different for all of us. Like, for example, um, you know, what are these, you know, because we're doing ostensibly, we're doing the... Uh, um, the dining room thing, but what is this? This is a spoon, right? This is a spoon. Do I use it often? No. I have other spoons in my kitchen that I use every day, but do I want to keep the spoon? Yes, I do, because this is from my family. This is a family thing, and not just that it's a precious item, but when I have a fancy dinner, which isn't often, but I use these, and it brings me joy. This has the first name of my great uncle Jim's mother, engraved on it like this is not how I live now I don't have engraved silver I have like um stainless steel flatware that I got on dis on employee discount when I when I worked in Mikasa and it was on sale but this reminds me of my family and I also use it so I keep it it feels good to me but if I didn't use it is there a way I could move it out of my life with other things in your life say if I don't use this why am I not using it and just listen for the answer Maybe you want to use it, but you haven't. What's keeping you from using the things in your life that you are currently not using, but you think you want to do it, okay? Um, Susan D is saying, and I will preface this, Susan, I didn't mean to just interrupt me answering or mentioning your call. One of the reasons why I actually read the uh, questions out loud is because I record all of my TikTok lives and I download them from TikTok and then I upload them to Destination Decluttered on YouTube. I do this so that if you're here live, that you don't have to worry about remembering everything in your head. I Ideally, I am giving you quality, 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 all good stuff, all killer, no filler. Uh, however, that can be a lot to think about. If you've never thought about your clutter and your stuff in your home like this, it may be a lot. You can go back and re-listen to this. And the cool thing is, too, is I want to say is what I do on camera is very inconsequential. What I speak to you and connect up with you is these ideas, the transferring of these ideas. And so the neat thing is, is that you can listen to this like a podcast. You can, and many people do this, and I'll offer it to you right now. Um, it's 1049 Eastern time where I am, Destination Decluttered. I'm Beth, I'm a decluttering life coach. I will be here on TikTok Live for the next 40, no, yeah, 40 minutes. I'm doing the math in my head and I started at half. You could listen to me right now and declutter your home a bit. People have done that. They say, hey, yeah, I put you on my eye, my pods, my things, whatever. I can hear you and I can walk around to do some decluttering. Use this time for you. Make it fun. Make it not so pain in the butt-like. 
if you think that decluttering is a pain in the butt. But the reason that I rephrase, I, I, I t say the questions is so that if you are walking around and decluttering, you know where this answer is coming from. But also when I upload these to Destination Decluttered on YouTube, that um, people will know what the question is because they don't see the stuff that's running in the comments. And thank you so much for everybody who is following me, my Destination Decluttered TikTok page. Thank you very much. Um, all right, sorry, where was I? Susan D is saying, my mom has decided to use my grandma's good china every day and got rid of the rest of her dishes. Wonderful, that is such a good idea. Use the stuff you have. Having multiples of things used to be to me in a way that is almost like it's an external showing of how much money you have that we can afford, we can afford to have two separate dish sets of dishes. And that can work if you want to use them. Like, you know, you could say, I have my fancy dishes and I'm cool with only using them at Thanksgiving, at Christmas, at Easter. Like, I'm totally like picturing my sister's dining room like this. And that's okay if that feels right to you. You do what feels right to you. I am here for when things don't feel right to you and you don't know what to do. And I can help you with this. I'm like the, your best friend hanging out with you when you are... Um, decluttering and the cool thing is I'm your best friend because I don't judge I'm here for you I am as I like to say and if I was in my room I'd be showing you like a little road trip thing but I'm all about road trips I am like your BFF in the passenger seat I'm your co-pilot on this this road trip called your life and all I am in your life for is to help you get to where you want to go so that your life looks and feels and functions like you want it to I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with this and I also show up and do TikTok lives. I have a destination decluttered email mailing list that if you're on, you, you know a lot of this stuff, you get first dibs if you want to sign up for that. Quick commercial break, destinationdecluttered.com slash join. It's free. There's all sorts of good stuff. Just wanted to mention that. But I am here for you. I love that your mom has said, this feels right to me to use something that my grandma thought was only for good things. I'm going to use it every day because my life is worth using the good china if it feels right to you. Okay, I just noticed there are 46 new messages, so I'm going to keep on scrolling. They see me scrolling, they be hating. Okay, uh, Mrs. Howard 1 is saying, this is really helpful since I inherited this habit. <gasps> what a cool way of putting it. It's so true. You can inherit habits of hanging on to things sometimes. I am telling you, the people that I got these from and my parents, I also inherited the habit of hanging on to things. And having the right stuff in your home is great, but having too much of the wrong stuff jams you up. And notice it's just a habit. Habits can be changed. And it's so worth it to just get curious about your habits so you can change them. All right, what do we get? There we go. I did 27 auctions of other people's stuff, says Call Me Pet, and I feel like an expert. There we go. Um, the more you do it, the easier things get. That's why when I, when I help people declutter and I'll, I'll help you with this right now in your dining room again notice how I'm trying to keep it on point notice the stuff that's on the surface the stuff that is on the horizontal surfaces that don't belong there doesn't belong there you could right now go into that area right now while I'm talking and probably while listening to me put stuff away where it, it belongs or closer to where a better place than where it is now that's surface clutter stored clutter is probably like right here like I have my like, I don't even know what we call this, buffet, uh, dresser, whatever. We have this drawer thing um, that if I open the drawers, that's where stuff is stored, stored in drawers. Notice what I did there? I like rhymes. I like alliterations. This keeps it entertaining for me. Um, when I open up the drawer, what's in there? Do I want it? Do I not want it? That stuff usually takes a little bit more thought. So you might not be able to make those decisions because you have to listen to, instead of listening to me, you need to listen to your own brain and your own gut and trust those answers. And then the le the lowest le or the deepest level really of decluttering is the one that is sentimental. So store, excuse me, surface stored sentimental. Sentimental is this isn't just any spoon. This spoon has a story. This spoon has history. People, hundreds, you know, like people have touched this. There's a connection. There's a story. Those are the things that my, my clients will attest because we always go through that kind of, you know, tricky spot of a, of a, of a road trip of seeing that knowing you're going to feel some feelings and being afraid to feel the feelings. But once you feel the feelings about the, 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 um, sentimental stuff, knowing you can survive that and you're okay, then you can make a good decision about what feels right to you. 
All right. There we go. I have an Aunt's Fiesta wear, says Chili Reed Thorpe. I have an Aunt's Fiesta wear for four. Don't know where to sell it. Everybody, the, the internet is your friend. I will say this. Back in the day, prior to the internet, having knowledge up here was currency, was valuable. Knowing that random, uh, that random like pop culture reference or knowing that this is, you know, 1930s green versus 1970s green versus 1986 green. Having that knowledge up here was valuable. You could make money because other people didn't know it. You could grab it. Even these people, you know, this plate I'm sure is worth money versus just a plate that you got anywhere. I say that because now the times are different. Google, the internet, do a search. Your aunt's Fiesta wear don't know where to sell it. Find out if anybody's buying it. The answer may be no. Fiesta wear was kind of a fad and it still kind of is for some people who still like it, but it may not be as valuable. It may be not worth as much money as it used to be because times have changed. So Google it, flip on on the back. There's so many resources out there that can help you identify what decade something was from. Um, you know, like, as I said, easy thing is like on dishes, see this? I'm sure that because this is a certain hallmark that this, even the fact that it says HLO USA, it doesn't say microwave dishwasher safe, old school, right? Notice on this dish right here, this also says stuff right here that you could Google those words and get closer to it. Google the images. If you have silverware, you know, notice, and this is so funny, my old eyes, notice it might say, where am I? Sorry, might say sterling, or it might say silver plate. And there's a difference between sterling and silver plate. Notice those things to help you become educated so you make, can make an educated decision. A decision based on information so you feel you have more knowledge to make a decision that feels right to you. That's why I always say to clients and, and people who are decluttering, please know that there are stages. There are places you can go that are between the corner, you know, the corner cupboard with all the stuff in it and a dumpster. The last thing, the last place I want you to put your stuff is a dumpster if you can't, you know, so there are stages before that. And you find that out by researching it, okay? Um, okay, Southern Dane Deb, oop, I'm sorry, I just missed that. A whole bunch of things going by. I'm trying to help here. A little wicked lot of people. Let me, hoo, doo, 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 doo. let me do this. Okay, there we are, backing it up. Um, Southern Dane Deb says, so overwhelmed oh, with caregiving, any ideas on decluttering with limited time and available? Yes, a little bit at a time. Every little bit helps. Um, every little bit you can do to make it look better for yourself while you're doing the decluttering is, is really the way to go, even if you were not overwhelmed by caregiving. Don't think to yourself, I need a big swath of time. Every little difference you can make is a good difference. I'll give this perfect example. I feel better now because while I was waiting for my tea water to warm up, I noticed that the, um, talk about habits, that the buttons I press on the microwave, I always am using pretty much the same three buttons. And I noticed because of the way that the light was, that it was, they were looking kind of scungy, you know, like fingerprints and crap on there. So while that, the minute that it took to warm the, the water, I got a, I got a little, um, you know, Mr. Mr. Clean, a little spray, ch -ch 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 -ch. cleaned it off, wiped it off. Looks better. Maybe it's not perfect, but boy, is it better than it was one minute ago. And notice you can change things to look better incrementally in a minute or two. Don't think it has to be all or nothing. I'm not going to do anything until I have the time to do everything. That just gets you hanging out with a lot of crap for a long time, okay? Every little bit helps. What little thing can you do to make your place look better, not just so it looks better for other people. No, so you feel better in your place. What can you do to make yourself feel better in your place? And here's the thing I want to notice, I want to offer in this kind of mindset is notice the stuff that bugs you. Notice some tiny things that bug you and fix them. Me, a tiny little thing. Nobody else might notice it, but I feel better knowing that I wiped off that little thing. What are the tiny things that create friction? When you look at it, you're like, oh, I don't like that. You clean it, it's done. You declutter it. I don't really like, I'm really sick of that, that every time I, you know, pull out that coffee mug, it's got a chip in it. Every time I use it, the handle is too small. Notice those, those low level things that bug you. 
those are the little incremental things. And if you get rid of those things, if you, if you solve for those, suddenly you have gotten a, a, a pebble out of your shoe. Okay. Notice that. Okay. Here's a go. Cat used to dream of frequent dinner parties that never happened. Now I use my special pieces for every day. Yes. Notice people. One of the reasons we keep stuff is because either they remind us who of who we used to be, memories, things like that, but they also are there because of who we thought we wanted to be or we might be. I thought I was going to have a lot of dinner parties or I used to have dinner parties and now I don't anymore. Now just notice that. Who did you used to be? Who are you now? And who do you want to be? Past, present, future. And what I want to suggest to you is, if you're if you're today to say, and this is this is big with us because we used to have some blowout parties, um, pre-COVID, you know, things like that, is say, back in the day we used to have some killer parties. Today, the way we are with our lives, with COVID, with our energy level, with our gumption, do we want to have those anymore? Maybe not. So in the future, we may not have as many parties. So therefore, maybe I can whittle down the amount of martini glasses that I have. I can probably decrease the amount of wine glasses that I have. And also, I live differently. I used to think I wanted everybody at a party to have like a stemmed wine glass. Now, they, stemmed wine glasses are a little bit out of vogue. You know, you've got like the little cups ones. So I say, you know what? I don't want to have 80 wine glasses at my house on the off chance that I have one party. If I have a party, my friends are so cool that they could eat, they could drink wine out of juice glasses and still have a good time. Notice that where are you, where does the stuff that you are holding on to point to your past, to your present or to your future? Okay. And make your future, make your today the best because the past is gone and the future isn't guaranteed. <laughs> German made, nice to see you. Um, plan to take one plate of past down China to make a plate wall. Goodbye to the rest. I love that idea. See, and also now Heather B says that's a great idea. Why are engraved items and photos, et cetera, so hard to part with? And how do you part with them? Now, those can be tricky. They can because they tell you even more of a story. It's almost like you're throwing away that person, but you're not. It's just somebody scratched out something from the from the wood, from the thing. But it's it, it kind of feels personal, doesn't it? You know, how you part with it is you say to yourself, is my life going to feel and look and function better without this? And then you say, I love you but I'm gonna give you a better home because if, if, if it's not feeling good here for you, it's not feeling good for the thing, right? That's why I don't like this over, like this trend of getting things engraved and you know things like that. It makes it so much harder to get rid of things. But in order for you to live a life you want today and in the future, have that conversation with yourself and get used to, get in the habit of being okay with making some uncomfortable decisions because it's like that you know are gonna lead you to feeling better. Okay, there we go. Um, what else do we have? Love your mindset. Thank you. I love, I like mine too. Um, love this. I love also, I got to share, when people are there and I'm chatting with one person and declutter, um, and you all are helping each other out, every single time I do a TikTok Live, this wonderful community of people um, gathers up. We all may be struggling with our own clutter. As I said, I'm a decluttering life coach, but I, I still, you know, have challenges to make. Do I want this? Do I not? If I do, where does it go? How many quantities do I have on things? It's an ongoing process. It is an ongoing process for all of us. And that's okay. Because what we're doing is we are constantly kind of updating what we have and what we do and what we own to our current version of ourselves. As I was saying to a one-on-one -on -one client uh, recently, I do one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, coaching and I want to make sure I mention that because I do have some consultations available on my on my page. I'll get to that in a sec before I lose this thought. It's almost like here you are today, but you're, you know, like on your phone when you have to update your apps, if you haven't updated the way you're thinking and acting about your stuff, it's like you're working with an outmoded system and you're like an older version of your life, an older version of your app in order to live, you know, to make your life look and feel and function like you want to today. You need to notice where you're not aligned with today. If you're working on yesterday's mindset, stuff, ideas, concepts, update your current app so that your life and your um, and your your life just functions so much better for you. Okay, um, 
what I want to offer, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, kind of just in the, um, it's like top of the hour, in reintroducing myself for anybody who's just kind of tuned in. My name is Beth, don't worry about that. Destination Decluttered. I am a decluttering life coach. Please just remember Destination Decluttered. If you haven't liked my um, TikTok page, if you could like it or follow it, I'm always thinking liking, you know, like on Facebook. It's awesome. Uh, that would be great. Um, also, if you know people who are cluttered but they aren't on TikTok, I have a page on Instagram, I have a page on Facebook, and all of my TikTok lives are downloaded from here and uploaded to Destination Decluttered on um, on YouTube. So that's where you can get me socially. Uh, if you are interested in learning more, getting first dibs on a lot of the stuff that I do, Destination Decluttered email mailing list is at destinationdecluttered.com slash join. Uh, those are the folks that uh, know before anybody else about when I'm doing a TikTok live. They're the folks that know before anybody else about when there is um, our availabilities on my consultation calendar if, for me to do coaching with people. So if you're interested, if you would like me to be your one-on-one -on -one decluttering coach for now, starting now and for the next 10 weeks right before the holidays and getting that support during the holidays, the first step is to um, get onto my website, destinationdecluttered.com. There's a bunch of like links to my calendar there. Schedule a consultation show up for it and we make sure we're a good fit and then we talk about this 10-week package that i offer how much it costs what do we do what we can accomplish um get that started now because there are and, and i feel like i'm going to be all salesy but i'm not there are a, a limited number of slots available because i'm just one person and i deal with you one-on-one -on -one. the other thing was too oh yeah just about all the good stuff all the good stuff if you're on my email mailing list is i do free workshops um we do a monthly zoom you've got info on that if you're on the mailing list if you just signed up for the mailing list don't worry i will sign i will send the um the link to the zoom call that we do it's kind of like this right here only better because we get to have more interaction with me and you and also all of us okay so just notice that that's kind of like the infomercials thing but i just do that seriously to let you know that there are uh, there's a variety of levels of help out there for what you're struggling with. The cool thing though, is I was thinking about this. Let me riff on this for a second. Then I'm going to hop back into your questions and comments about, um, decluttering in your home and things like that. So my husband and I were away for this weekend. And as we were driving home from where we were, um, I popped things into Google maps. And for those of you who know about me, like I love road tripping, like that road trip analogy is what has allowed me to transform my life and home into what I love because I get excited about my destination and it's like, how do we get there? And I literally am, here we are now, boop, 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 here's destination home. Now, Google Maps gave me like a number of options and here's the interesting thing that I wanna to relate to it as far as coaching goes, is there is, there was a, there was a, a route to go home between here and like between where we were and home that said it's gonna take this amount of time and this is the toll. It was going to cost money to get home earlier, get there quicker. There were other just there were other routes to get me home that would get me there. They would get me there, but they were not toll roads, so it took a longer amount of time. And I took a screenshot of the of the um, of the map because I wanted to remember that that coaching is kind of like paying the toll to get there quickest and fastest, so you just get to where you want to go. There are many other ways you can do this. You can do this alone with all the free stuff that I offer. But if you just want to get there and get there quickly and, and have the route tailor made to get you to where you want to go the quickest, that's really what paid coaching does is you pay for it to be completely customized to you and not just me talking to 200 people right now that, you know, it's, it's completely customized to where you're stuck so that we create a solution for you. That's why paid coaching is so beneficial and it's so worth it because the other thing too is it's not just about the 10 weeks we spend together. Even the short time, if you're on this TikTok live, you'll notice that I talk about how you think and you feel about things. This helps you start to practice thinking and acting about things differently than you have so that when you leave this, they are skills you have for the rest of your life. And I wouldn't be doing this if I just felt like it was kind of like, here's how to make your sock drawer look good. It's kind of boring. Or here's how to organize your dishes and things. Okay, so that was a little bit of the infomercial thing. But I really think it's important for you to know that there is help out there. And if you want to get there, there are resources available. Okay, now back to all these messages. Oh my God, there's 71 of them. I'm going to do the best I can. I'm here for like another 21 minutes or so. 
And then I gotta check what I've got going on. I think I'm good. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna try to do this slowly. Happy Monday. Please do subscribe to me to YouTube. That's good. Um, uh, actually, I didn't get a notification. Um, was this a pop-up live? This wasn't a pop-up live, user 1963. Uh, it is scheduled. So here's another thing, too, is when I do TikTok lives, um, I you should have gotten an email that had the, if you're on my email mailing list, that would have told you when I was live. Um, also, I do always record a video about when I'm going to be live, and I, I pin it to the top of my TikTok page. So that's what I do. As far as... As far as TikTok letting you know it's alive, I don't how, know how that works. But if you're on those two things, that's how you would have done it. Okay? Um, Tish the Dish says, moving to a bigger house isn't the answer, is it? We'll just fill up more square footage, right? Yes. You know the answer, and the answer is yeah. Yeah. My family, who I, I, come, from a de I come from a cluttered family, they often say, we're like a gas. We expand to fit the place available. So if you have a bigger place, it actually makes things worse, I believe, because it just you don't get to that crucial point where it doesn't work for you until you have substantially more stuff. We live in a small home and I love it because it keeps us straight and narrow. Even the, the space we have, we don't need as much space we have, it's just the two of us. But you know the answer too. Yeah, more space isn't the solution. That's why I am so irritated with all these storage places making money off of you guys. Making money off of you month after month after month just because you're afraid to make a decision and get the things down to the quantity and quality that you want. Notice that. Um, I would rather use my china on regular days when there's not a huge meal to clean up. There you go. Um, yep. Kat is saying sometimes giving up the thing is giving up a dream which makes it more difficult. I get that. But you know what? Do you need to give up the dream? That's what I want to suggest. Do you need to give up the dream? If there's something you're dreaming about, go do it. Why aren't you doing it? Ooh, and for those of you who notice these things, it's 11-11 where I am. Um, yeah, I don't know why, but this motivates me. Okay, Jennifer, thank you for letting me know. Um, I need you to co-pilot for a very long time. That's okay. That's the great thing. I will say this too. Um, the way I coach, and notice I get my little hands here. I like to keep things clean and simple and organized. The only thing I offer is one thing. I offer a 10-week package, paid coaching, once a week for an hour, just you and me, for an entire hour, just you and me talking about you and where you want to go and where you're stuck. The cool thing is, is depending upon your journey, if 10 weeks is enough for you, that's great. If 20, 10 weeks is not a lot, you want me more in your life, all we do is you sign up for another 10-week package right after that. And the great thing is, I'll share with you, is that my rates have changed, my rates do change, and my rates will change, and they, are, they, will, they, they increase, they will not go down. They will only go up from here. I say that because when you sign on for me with a one-on-one, -on -one, as a one-on-one -on -one client, if you continually want to stick with me and you just renew, you will always be, um, fat, you will always remain at the rate that you signed up for. Now, the funny thing is, is most of my clients are women, but I coach anybody of any variety. So I like to joke because people talk about being like grandfathered in. So I say you're grandmothered in at the rate you signed up for. So just notice that. It, it, I can be your co-pilot for as long as you need me, but my goal isn't for you to need me all the time. I'm like a co-pilot. I am like your driver's ed teacher. I am here to teach you some skills and for you to practice them in between our sessions so that you feel confident enough by the end of when we're leaving that you can do these things without me being in your life because you have started to develop your own co-pilot voice on the inside. That is my goal. My goal is for you to not rely on me, but to learn some skills and practice so that when we get to the end of our session, kind of I hand you your, your license and you go and then you practice this stuff like you did when you got your driver's license. Okay. Um, what about big family portraits inherited? How do I physically throw those away? Um, well, physically you take them and you put them into a trash bag. But you, you know that that's not what it is, right, Laura? No, it can be difficult to say that. You feel like you're throwing away your family history. Why do you think there are so many antique malls and antique places? Maybe there's somebody else in the family who wants them. Maybe there's somebody who um, it is you know, decorating a hotel or something that, that you could put it into a thrift store, an antique store. You could sell it. You could give it away. All of these things are before you even get to the throwing away part. 
Notice that I have, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but like we've got some really creative people in my town and I love it because there are some um, paintings that they have that, at this one vintage place down the street that the girls have written like um, thought bubbles and sassy sayings on it. I couldn't do that myself, but I love that they do it. Okay. Um, all right, here we go. Uh, Linda Mosgear, uh, 17 years ago, trying to simplify, frustrating, do it, get rid of the frustration. Okay, um, here we go. Um, okay, let me see what we got. Love the idea of how to use the silverware passed down. Okay, okay, I love this. You're giving good answers, people. Um, <laughs> here's, okay, this is cool. Somebody, Annalisa, hey, nice to see you. If you keep something, you will have to clean it. You will. I mean, luckily for me, in the various jobs that I have had, I have done a lot of silver. I used to work for a vintage place on Newbury Street in Boston where we sold vintage silver. So I would spend my time um, polishing silver. I actually find it kind of zen to polish silver because my mind can be elsewhere, but I can see a before and after. Okay. What else do we have here? Um, I love it. Somebody, Lucy just said, donated most clothes to a women's shelter. Notice that there are places that your stuff can go that isn't all or nothing. It's not like it's either in my house or it's in a landfill. There are stages in between. Okay. Miss Crentis, thank you for, for co-coaching. I love it. I'm trying to meet, reach it with everybody here. Um, and Call Me Pat is saying, trust me, you don't much miss the stuff. And if you do, it is so easy to replace. That's why so much of this stuff that you, the stuff that you will truly, truly possibly miss are going to be the items of a sentimental nature. The stuff that you cannot replace easily on the out, uh, uh, on the out, you know, the, the mark, the outside marketplace. I don't know what my brain is trying to say, but out there stuff that you need that is going to fulfill a requirement. Like I need something to eat my food off of. It can be this dish. It can be this dish. They both have the same function, but each one of them actually see, isn't this cool? See how nicely they look together. This is when I, this is why I'm keeping my mother's China because my sisters already have theirs. And I, I, this is not my style, but I love how it coordinates with what I have. Anywho, notice that they are both, both functional items. They both function to put food on so it doesn't get on my lap. One of them has sentimentality. So this is slight, this is one that just requires slightly more thought and feeling to make a decision that I feel good about. This, you know, I could sell this, I could donate it. It has a story about how I found it on somebody's free pile, which is kind of cool. But other than that, um, it's a decision-making process, okay? What else do we have here? Um, oh, see, yeah. Annalisa is saying, which is so important, I used to try and do too much and would get rid of things I actually did want to keep. This, my friend, and to everybody, this is why I use that road trip metaphor. I want you to feel good every day that you are decluttering. I want you to do it at a pace that feels right to you. I want you to do it in a way that aligns with your nervous system capacity and maybe even slightly expands it but not so much that you freak out and you make bad decisions. I want you to expand your nervous system capacity so that you can make decisions you thought were difficult and survive them to know you're safe and then say, okay, I can go back and do that again because I, I, I'm safe. You know, that safe from harm feeling that our internalness does. The more you can expand your capacity to make decisions that you know are gonna feel right to you, even though back in the day they might've felt scary, the more your life transforms into the more, excuse me, the more you transform your life and your home into something that really truly reflects you and you love. Okay, notice that. All right, there's so many of these things. Okay, yeah, life is a highway. I know, I, my, my husband, I will say this, I will give a shout out, that life is a highway song goes through. My husband, his name is Cliff Hillis and he wrote a song, we wrote a song together. It's called Just Drive and we made a video for it and my, my friend, um, Rob, whose birthday it is today, made the video down the beach in Delaware. Our friend Heather um, stars in it. it. We borrowed a, a VW Bug with a rooftop on it. It's called Just Drive. It's on YouTube. There's a video for it. I think it's on the Destination Decluttered channel. That's what I want to say is just drive. Just drive your life. You know, get behind the wheel, point your, your car in the direction of where you want to go and just get there. Okay. How do you depart from items that belong to my mother who passed away a year ago? Lucy, you wait for time. You wait to feel where you have the emotional and nervous system capacity to do it. When it feels right to you, when you think you can do it, test it. Wade into the water. Wade in gradually. 
until it feels okay. And then you do that level. And then it feels okay. And then you do that level. And then it feels okay. And then you do that level. When you expand your capacity to do these things incrementally, it's so much better than trying to go and do too much and make decisions that don't feel right. And then that's what leads to regret. Okay. But again, with the road trip analogy, find a pace that feels right to you. It may not, you may not even want to start now. It may be too raw. But when there's a time where you're like, okay, I feel like I could do this and not freak myself the F out, then I'm going to do baby steps. And that's why I always suggest to everybody, start with your surface clutter. I'm in my kitchen. You know, usually all I've got left in my house really is surface clutter and some random stuff in the basement. But when I do the basement TikTok live, we will talk about that. But notice the stuff that's in your surface. Then when you're cool with that and you've been able to make surface things and it looks better, open up a drawer. Deal with one drawer. Chunk it down. Expand your, I, I, I'm all on this, expand your capacity to make decisions that feel right to you so you're not freaking out. You say, I can do this. And the more you expand your capacity to make decisions that align with you, that's when you really start to transform your life. When you can feel the disconnect between your, your body and your brain and then follow the one that feels right to you. That's when things really transform. Okay, notice that. Um, what else do we have? We've got nine minutes here. Um, and, uh, yeah, see, there you go. Thank you, Annalisa. I'm just catching up on things. She's saying, I also noticed when I do things in smaller chunks, I don't regret what I get rid of because you're doing it at a pace that aligns with you. You're doing it at a pace that you are noticing the things and asking yourself, what do I want to do with this thing? Or even a, even a category of things. Now, this is the thing you may say, oh, I've got a million stuff. You have categories of things in your home. You have categories of stuff in your dining room. You have plates, you have bowls, you have dishes, like, you know, soup bowls, you have platters, you have silverware, you have glasses, you have um, linens, you have, um, we haven't even talked about the fact that you don't even need to use your dining room as a dining room unless you wanted to. You can make your dining room into anything you want. That's why my dining room looks like this. We do not dine in here. We have a rattan set here. I've got some tiki mugs over here. We've got a record player. We've got our, um, this is like where we hang when we have friends over. Ironically, we also have another room that we also can hang out with friends, um, but you can make a decision feels right to you. And the more that your life feels right to you, it's going to resonate and it's going to feel good to, <laughs> to live a life that feels good because you've made decisions that make you feel good. And that when you feel good, you're going to resonate, you're going to positive ripple effect to everybody. All right. Um, what else do we have? And yes, to anybody who is dealing with this stuff with grief, with loss. I was going to say it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it. My heart is with you, with every single one of you, because we all will deal with this at a certain point. If we're not dealing with it now, we're going to, or we've dealt with it in the past, we're going to deal with it now and in the future. So the more that you can say, I'm going to make a decision that feels right to me for my life, for the time I have, so that I also, and this is going to get morbid for a smidge, so that I don't leave other people with shit that I haven't made decisions on, Kind of like it may have happened beforehand. Get your own house in order for yourself while you're living. It will make it easier on the other people who are left over that are going to have to deal with tidying up your, your legacy. The more you do it, you get to live it now. And it's going to help people who are going to be there after you're gone. Notice that. Um, ah, call me Pat. I love this. I should like snapshot that. She says, I have listened to many coaches and relate to you most. I don't even have anything left to declutter. Oh, that's awesome. You know what, Pat? I want to offer to you then now that you have nothing to declutter, what do you want to do with all that time you have? Go for a walk, have a friend, get a manicure, take a, take a, um, you know, take a class, uh, you know, trans change the world. Now that you have the time, you can really change the world. I truly feel like one of the reasons why women were taught to keep, keep in this past couple of generations to be so busy to taking care of the house is so they distract us from transforming the world into something we really want it to be. Just notice that, All right? Summer, I'm so glad you found my live. Here I am. I will be doing, here's the thing too, TikTok lives this week. Oops, excuse me, because I'm gonna, I wrote it down. And I realized this. Um, so I do TikTok lives quite often. And there is a video for those of you who just are tuning in or have been on for a while. Um, if you could follow my TikTok page, that's supposed to tell you when I go live. But in just in, in case you don't see that, go to the top of my TikTok page. There is a pinned post that says TikTok live schedule. And it tells you when I'm um, going live or not. 
Um, because sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Those of you on the destination decluttered email mailing list, I made a typo. I realized this as I as I um, wrote this down and I was doing the, the video. The next TikTok live I'm doing is this coming Wednesday, and it's Wednesday night. It's at 8 p.m. Eastern. 8 p.m. Eastern because I want to get I'm Eastern, but I wanna help people on the East Coast, excuse me, the West Coast, I wanna help everybody. So I wanna be available to people on the West Coast and I even got some folks from Hawaii tuning in last time. So I wanna make sure I'm available for people at different times. If you can't make it, no big deal. They are downloaded to the destination, de or downloaded and then uploaded to the destination decluttered email mailing list, which, or excuse me, get in, my, get in cart before the horse. They're uploaded to destination decluttered YouTube page. Um, if you want to get on the destination decluttered mailing list, I just suggest that it is free. It is low pressure. It is not. I hate it when I sign up for one thing and then I get on somebody's automatic mailing list thing. I, I will share with you every single email you get from me is something that I have written and sent out manually. It is not on some, um, automatic thing. I can taste the difference between something that's genuine and organic and from a person and when it's being spit out automatically by a machine. And I don't like receiving those emails that are automatically spit out by a machine. So I don't do them. The only time I do is that when you sign up for my mailing list, um, you get an automatic welcome email because I was doing that. I was doing that one-on-one -on -one, and then I realized I could batch that because it was taking too much time. And that's just really just the welcome general email. Anything else you get is when I decide there's something good I want to share with you, I share it. And I don't, you know, it's it's all good stuff. Okay. But yes, Wednesday, um, October 11th, 8 p.m. Um, we're going to do shoes and clothing clutter and closet stuff because clothing clutter and closet stuff is a big thing. So people ask me to do that. So that will be that. We'll see. I probably won't be in this room. Maybe I'll be near a clothing clause. Then I've got some other things, other places, Friday, Monday. Next Wednesday is the members only um, Zoom call. So if you want to be invited to that, become a member. Again, I only say members only because it reminds me of those like 80s jackets. It's free. It's like a free membership. I just think it's funny to think of members only. Um, that is on next Wednesday. And so, yeah, I am doing TikTok lives between now and... Um, what do you call it? Uh, the 20th. The other thing too is though, I want to really seriously just spend these last few minutes of oh, 40 messages. I will do the best I can. Uh, okay. Um, Kath, everybody. Um, yeah. Daily emails are the worst Try tips for trying to sell the stuff. Try it. See if anybody buys it. If they don't buy it, you may feel better donating it once you gave it a shot to, to sell it. Just do the thing. Take the action. Experiment. As they say, F around and find out. See if it works it. There you go. Thank you, Ka Kathleen, uh, Catherine, for doing that. The other thing, too, I want to say in all seriousness is if you are considering wanting Destination Decluttered one-on-one -on -one coaching, it would behoove you to sign up for um, a consultation this week or next. I say that because 10 weeks from now, not to freak everybody out, is going to be the Christmas holidays, the end of the year, the f things like that. I offer you that as a good thing to realize that if you sign up for coaching, you will get me as your, uh, you will have account, not even accountability, you'll have support during those places where you're usually bringing out the dishware and the dinnerware and all that kind of stuff. So you will have me on your side to help you go through really making those decisions that feel right to you. The other thing too, is I want to share with you that I am a very flexible coach. When I'm able to, if we need to postpone a gig because too many things are going on, no big deal. I travel sometimes and things come up with me that I have to postpone a co coaching thing. So don't freak yourself out saying, oh, I can't do it in this 10 weeks because I've got that. No, we can work together. You don't even know if it's going to be a good fit or not. So if you're interested in having paid coaching with me at this rate, which is only going to go up, I just mentioned that because it's going to, it's a stone cold fact, um, is look, go to my destination decluttered website, go for work with me, check for the big things that say schedule your consultation now, schedule a consultation. I get back to you individually and I say, yes, this is going to work. Um, let's meet up at this time and then do the brave thing. Show up for your consultation. Find out what it's about to make sure it feels right for the both of us. Okay. Dottie Hart, I'm signing off in a minute, but yeah, if you're overwhelmed and know with where to start, there are tons of videos on my um, TikTok um, that pretty much that I'm overwhelmed and don't know where to start is the thing that pops up at every one of my um, TikTok lives. So there are videos on my TikTok page that will help you with that. But I'll give you the really quick, easy, simple thing. Overwhelm is a feeling up above here. What you need to do is go from over to down. 
breathe down, write it down, calm down your nervous system, write things down, get your body involved, chunk things down by time, chunk things down by room, and tell yourself a better story. Tell yourself instead of I'm overwhelmed and don't know where to start, say, I can do this, what can I do today to even get incrementally um, closer to my destination of being decluttered than where I am. And allow yourself to believe that you know things you can do. You may not know everything, none of us know everything, but boy, I can guarantee, Dottie, that if I said, what can you do today to get your home less cluttered than it is, right? Like less cluttered than it is now, you would come up with some ideas. Go and do those. Going from thinking and paralysis to taking action in the right direction, that's really what it's all about. You could do so much, Dottie. Name one thing. Three things today. What are three simple things that you could accomplish today that would get your um, home feeling, looking and feeling better? And what I want to offer to everybody here as I sign off is your destination is where it all begins. What do you want your home to look like? To you, to other people. How do you want to feel in your home? That is even more important than how it looks to other people. Is How does it look to you? How do you want to feel? How does your house make you feel? And then how does it function? Write down those things. Answer that question. Dottie, write that stuff down. Everybody, create your destination. And that's going to, get, that's going to increase the likelihood of you getting there than if you're just like, I don't know, I just got to make it look better, you know? Notice that, okay? And I got to sign off because I've got consultations and coaching coming up and I have a life to live and I know you do too. Baby steps, a little bit at a time. Calm down and expand your capacity to make decisions that align with what you're doing. It may not be something you're familiar with, but the more you do it, the easier it gets and the more you can expand your um, emotional and nervous system capacity to increase the life that you want. Okay, I love this, you guys. You've been awesome. I hope this helps. Again, destination decluttered, yada, yada, do the things that feel right to you. But I want to say, push a little bit. Could you expand your capacity to take one step to say, I'm going to sign up for a mailing list. I'm going to sign up for coaching. Don't do it if it's freaking you out, but just notice it's freaking you out and pay attention to how all this feels and say, yeah, but you know what? Wouldn't it be cool if my life looked and felt and functioned exactly like I wanted to? Okay. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful day. I will see you in another room of my house on Wednesday, 8 p.m., when I'm going to be doing the next Destination Decluttered TikTok. And if you know people who are decluttered in your home or cluttered in your life, let them know I'm around. If they're on TikTok, we can meet here. Um, I also am on Instagram, YouTube, and um, the other one, Facebook, okay? Have a good one, you guys. I'll see you on Wednesday.